Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can generate a confidence interval around a sample proportion using SPSS. Before we get started let me note that underneath the video description you will find a link to this SPSS data file. It contains uh, 15 cases, uh, basically 15 rows of data with observations on two separate variables. The first variable is an indication as to whether or not a person voted in the 2016 elections. So a value of zero indicates that a person uh, noted that they did not vote. A value of one indicates that the person stated that they did vote. The planned vote is basically reflecting a person's intention to vote in the upcoming 2020 election. So a value of zero indicates a plan not to vote and a value of 1 indicates a plan to vote. So what I'm going to do is run the analysis uh, in SPSS but show you a couple of ways in which the output may be presented. I also want to mention before I uh, begin this demonstration that you'll notice that the coding of the values of like for the 2016 of no and yes we have co value codings of 0 and 1. So actually, if I was to take the mean of all these values on this particular variable, that is actually going to be equal to the proportion of cases that indicated that they voted in 2016. Um, the same logic would apply with the planned vote 2020 variable. So if 0 is indicating that uh, a person does not plan to vote, a value of 1 indicates that the person does plan to vote, then actually the mean of all of these values is going to be equal to the proportion of individuals who express uh, a plan to vote in the 2020 election. So let's go ahead and get started. So I, I, I want to mention really uh, briefly, uh, we're going to go up under the edit uh, options mode right here and click on that. And I want to show you that if you go under output, um, one of the things that you'll, you'll notice it says output display. And you may see this clicked right here. It says pivot tables and charts. So what I'm going to do is show you um, the generation of confidence intervals with this particular output display and then I'm also going to show you another demonstration uh, using the model viewer output so you can see the difference between the two. So we're going to leave it on the current default with pivot tables and charts and what we're going to do is to go down to uh, go to analyze go down to non-parametric test and we're going to click on one sample. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this here and go up under where it says the objective tab I'm going to click on customize analysis where it says fields, I'm going to also click on, um, I'll go ahead and click on customize uh, field assignments and I'm going to move the voted 2016 variable over to the test fields box. Next I'm going to go under settings and I'm going to click on customize tests. So what we're going to be uh, doing is we're going to click on compare observed um, to uh, binary probability to hypothesize um, which is the binomial test. So we're not really going to be focusing in on the binomial test but we're going to go through this route to generate the confidence intervals for our values for uh, the voted 2016 um, variable. So more specifically the proportions associated with each category. So I'm going to click on options right here and where it says hypothesize proportion, that's actually for the binomial test. Again, I'm not going to be focusing in on that. What I'm just going to focus on is generating confidence intervals. So I'm going to click on where it says Clopper Pearson exact. Then I'm going to go down here and where it says specify success values, I'm going to start by just typing in zero down here. So what I want to do is to generate a confidence interval um, around the proportion of cases that uh, indicated that they did not vote in 2016. And so again, those individuals that did not vote in 2016, they are denoted with zero values on the 2016 variable. So next I'll click on OK. And where it says test options right here, I have uh, an option where it says confidence interval percentage. The default is 95%. So if I wanted to set this higher or lower, I can just use this little toggle right here in order to do so. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it on 95%. So I'm going to click on the run button and you'll see our output. So up here, this is actually that binomial test that I was telling you about. And for this uh, demonstration, we're not really going to be interested 
in looking at those results. Where it says confidence interval summary, you'll see that we have our estimate. So this is the proportion of individuals who uh, had a value of zero on that uh, voted variables. And so again, that's the proportion of individuals indicating that they did not vote in 2016. And the 95% confidence interval around that sample proportion uh, ranges from 0.213 to 0.734. Now, if I wanted to generate um, a confidence interval around um, uh, reflecting uh, an interval estimate of the proportion of individuals who indicated that they did vote, uh, I can do that as well just by going back down to non-parametric tests, one sample again, and we'll just go ahead and leave all these defaults as they are, uh, all those settings as they are. We'll go back to choose tests and where it says options, we'll click on that again. And where it says value down here, I'm going to actually change this to one. So I'm going to delete the zero and hit one right there. Click on OK and then click run. And so now you can see that we have our confidence interval summary and it's highlighting uh, voted 2016 equals 1. So the proportion of individuals in our sample that indicated uh, that they did vote in the 2016, ele 2016 election is 0.533. And actually, if you add that proportion to the proportion above for those individuals that did not uh, vote, then obviously they would sum to 1. So the 95% confidence interval uh, around that particular sample estimate of the, of the uh, proportion it, uh, it ranges between a lower bound of 0.266 to an upper bound of 0.787. Okay, so now I want to show you the second output mode, uh, and we're going to use the planned vote variable for that particular one. So what I'm going to do is go over to Edit, go down to Options, go to uh, Output again, and I'm going to click on Model Viewer. And so next when I click on OK, I can go through and run my analysis to generate my confidence interval. So I'm going to go back down to Analyze, go down to um, Non-Parametric Test, one sample again. I'm going to go ahead and reset everything and go back to the Objective tab and click on Customize Analysis. I'm going to click on Fields. I'm also going to click on Customize and uh, uh, use custom field assignments here. And I'm going to move my planned vote variable over to the Test Fields box. I'll click on the Settings tab and go back to Customize Test and click on Compare Observed Binary Probability to Hypothesize, basically the binomial test. Again, we're not going to be concentrating on the binomial test, but we're going to use this route to generate uh, confidence intervals for the two values um, for the proportion of individuals that fall at the two levels on the planned vote variable. So we're going to click on options right here and we'll go ahead and click on Clopper Pearson again and then we'll go down here where it says specify success values and so a value of zero as it appears in this data set would indicate uh, a person who is in expressing the intention not to vote in the 2020 election. So I'm going to click on OK right there and then click the Run button right here. And so now you can see we don't have all that same amount of information that we see above. It's not, or at least not appearing by default. But we can get that information if we double click on this table right here and you'll get this box that opens up and so you can see it says hypothesis summary view and if I click on uh, the little drop down and then go to confidence interval view then I can get the confidence interval so I'll go ahead and show you that by just clicking this button clicking on confidence interval view and you can see there it is and when I kind of move this over a little bit you can see that the sample estimate of 0.667 um, so that's the proportion of individuals in my sample uh, that indicated that they do not intend to vote in the 2020 election. You can see that it says plan vote 2020 is equal to zero. That is the group zero, the do not intend to uh, vote group. And the 95% confidence interval ranges between 0.384 and 0.882. So, um, at any rate, when I close this out now, you can see that the confidence interval summary appears in my output file. So now let's do this again, but in this case, we're going to 
uh, generate a confidence interval around the sample proportion of for those individuals who express an intention to vote. So we'll go back to one sample again. We'll go back under settings as before. Just leave everything else, uh, the defaults as they were. We'll go back under options here and we'll change this value right here. I'm going to change it to one and then um, hit OK and then run again. So once again we get our hypothesis table summary box. I'm going to double click on this so that I get my uh, model viewer. I'll use the little drop down here to click on confidence interval summary view as you can see right here and in this particular case you can see that our, uh, our uh, proportion of individuals in our sample expressing an intention to vote is 0.333 and the 95% confidence interval ranges between 0.118 and 0.616. So I'll click back out of there again and so you can see that that table is now showing up in the output. Now I do want to mention that the values that we're uh, typing in when we go through that uh, other route um, doesn't have to be 0 and 1. It can actually be 1 and 2 or whatever two values that you want to want to generate the confidence intervals for. So really quickly, let's just assume this is the plan vote uh, 2020 variable again, but instead of using value codes of 0 and 1, I used value codes of 1 and 2. So if I go back through, I'm going to just kind of rerun the analysis again. Uh, in this particular case, uh, actually what I'll do is just go ahead and just I've created this variable right here with a header and everything with the values of 1 and 2. So we'll go back down to non-parametric tests and one sample again and I'm going to go ahead and reset everything just kind of walk you back through it. We'll go back to objective tab, we'll click on customize analysis under fields I'm going to go ahead and click on custom field assignments and move plan vote 2 over to the test fields box. Next I'll click on settings click on customize tests then compare observed binary probability to hypothesized mean a uh, hypothesized value again this is using the binomial test route we'll click on options right here uh, we'll click on clopper pearson exact and then where it says specify success values we're going to type in a one and again using this second coding system the ones are reflecting individuals expressing an intention to not vote in the 2020 election so if I click on OK and then run right here you can see um, we again we get our hypothesis summary table if I uh, click on hypothesis summary view and then go down to confidence interval summary view you can see once again we have our sample estimate for the proportion of individuals uh, expressing an intention not to vote and you can see uh, that proportion is 0.667 and then our 95 percent confidence interval is exactly the same as it was before which is that it ranges between 0.384 and 0.882 so um, that actually uh, pretty well covers this demonstration and I appreciate you watching